welcome. Uh, good evening from Germany. Uh, my name is Bo. I am a final year PhD student at the University of Erlangen Nuremberg. And uh, the title of my talk is uh, Efficient Approach for Image Border Handling on GPUs via Iteration Space Partitioning. So the structure of this talk is as follows. I'm going to show you what, what is image border handling and why do we need it? And what, what kind of problems do we have? And then I would like to show you an approach called Iteration Space Partitioning. I will focus on the GPU implementations. And after that, I will show you a tool, a domain-specific language and a compiler. And why do I want to do this? Because uh, manually applying these optimizations is very tedious. And we also uh, provide an uh, automated approach to uh, automate all these. And after that, I will show you some result. And in the end, I will draw a summary. OK, so first, why do we need image border handling? So one fundamental operation in image processing is uh, filtering, or we can also call it local operators. Uh, in such operators, oh, yeah, sorry, I think there's supposed to be a picture here. Yeah, but I guess I guess it's it's it should be fine. So. For local operators, uh, basically we need uh, a window of pixels uh, to compute one output pixel. So think about these common functions like Gaussian filters, bilateral filters, it's just, et cetera. They are all local operators. And they are also the building block of many uh, image processing applications that's more complicated. For, for example, if we want to detect some edges or some corners or optical flow to uh, compute the motion of the pixels. So one problem we have when we are computing uh, image filters is we have this out of bound access problem. So when we are computing the pixels uh, in the, the border of the image, uh, the uh, input window, the pixels in this window uh, probably uh, is out of this memory bound and that creates some problems. And this need to be handled by the so-called border handling patterns. So all these out of bound access need to be somehow remapped back to this image space. And we have here four common uh, widely used uh, border handling patterns. We have clamp, mirror, repeat, and uh, constant. So different applications require different kind of patterns. Uh, for example, uh, medical imaging applications, for example, uh, multi-resolution filters, they like to use this, this mirroring to uh, do the border handling. And I think for computer vision applications, the clamp is more uh, common because uh, people want to see the edge being extended. And we need, and how do we map this uh, out of bound index back to the image iteration space? A naive approach is to uh, insert these conditional checks, this all these if statement. Here I, see, I show you one example, uh, Clem, and you see that this, this, there are four if statements to check the x and y index before the actual memory access, because after this checking, we, are, we can guarantee that the x and y index are within bound. So one problem we see in this kind of implementation is that the all these if statements they are very expensive and they are uh, they create some overhead and it is very costly and how can we avoid this or how, how can we improve this and that is why uh iteration space partitioning approach is proposed and uh, let me introduce what is it and why do we uh, how can we use it before I do that, I want to show you one uh, compiler optimization technique called index set uh, splitting. Uh, we do this because our approach is heavily inspired uh, by this uh, traditional um, compiler optimizations. And um, think about we have an original loop like this. We execute uh, a, an iterations and we want to update uh, to compute some, some array B and the value of B depends on A and the value of A is updated 
based on some range of in this index. Assume m is smaller than n. In the first m iterations, we let's say multiply the a by two, and in the remaining iterations, this value is multiplied by three, and then b is just the square of this. And if we look at this loop, we see that this this if and else is executed n n times in uh, in each iteration, and this is quite expensive. But if, if we look a bit careful, the first n iterations actually has uh, the first the, this if clause has nothing to do with the uh, remaining iterations, namely from m to n minus one, and vice versa. This else clause has nothing to do with the first m iterations. So what we can do, or what iteration uh, index set splitting can do, is uh, this loop can be split into two small loops. The first loop iterate over the first m iteration, and the second loop iterates over the remaining ones. So by doing so, as you can see, we can get rid of this if and else uh, uh, statement, and this is very nice. And in total, we do not execute more iterations, right? In total, the number of iterations is still n. So this uh, index set splitting or loop splitting, uh, depending on how people call this, transforms a loop into multiple loops that each of these sub loop iterate over a disjoint portion of the original index space. And by doing this, we can eliminate the execution of this uh, conditional statement. Now, this is quite nice. How can we generalize this to a 2D image space? So if we look at the iteration space of an image, if uh, when we want to check the out of bound access, a naive approach, as I showed earlier, we need to check four borders, basically, top, bottom, left, and right. And if we look into a bit careful, when we are computing pixels, uh, for example, at the, the top part of the image, we probably don't have to care about the, bo the bottom border at all. And similarly, when we are computing at the left side, we probably don't really care about the right side. So what we can do is we can partition the image or the iteration space into different regions, such that within each region, only part of the uh, border checks need to be executed. For example, in the top left, only the top and left need to be executed. And similarly for the, all the others. And the, what, what is important is for, for the majority part of the image, namely this body, and we don't have to check anything at all. And this, is, uh, this can save a lot of uh, conditional checks compared to the naive implementation. So how can this be implemented? Um, I want to talk about the CPU implementations first because I think it's a bit easier to understand. The CPUs assume we have the uh, sequential executions and uh, how can we uh, identify these regions? These regions can be identified by computing for index bound, and this index bound can be computed based on the image size as well as the window size. And after that, we can basically just create one nested loop for each region, and because it's sequential, the order doesn't really matter here, and we just iterate over all the regions. So in our, work, in our work, we uh, look at GPU implementations. And in GPU implementation, the story is a little bit different. So first of all, it's, it's parallel execution. So uh, people here are expert in GPUs. I don't have to go into details. But image is uh, divided into thread blocks. And thread blocks are dispatched onto streaming multiprocessors, assuming a media GPU for execution. And in that case, when we are calculating this index bound, the partition, this partition by index bound, there are four of them. When we are computing this for GPUs, we have to take into consideration the block size. Why do we want to do this? We don't want a block that there is one block that executes more than one region. If a block executes two regions, then there must be some if else statement to switch inside and there could be a branch divergence and we want to, that need to be avoided. And um, how can we uh, implement this? Um, I mean, there are, there are multiple options. We, we could have uh, multiple kernels, uh, multiple small kernels, or we can have one big fat kernel. If we have many small kernels, we basically need to uh, launch 
each of these kernel from the host, and this creates a lot of overhead. And also, uh, if we use a discrete GPU, the PCIe communication is not very efficient for small chunk of data. So in our case, we choose to use one big fat kernel, but in, if within one kernel, how do different blocks know which region that they need to execute? And we uh, insert the so-called region switching statement, and these are uh, used by the thread and identified by their corresponding block ID during runtime. And now let's talk about this region switching statement a little bit more. Uh, here I, I show you one example, what does it look like? And uh, the, the problem is uh, when we use this kind of uh, region switching statement, um, every thread uh, sees the same kernel code, right? And in that case, the register usage of the of the of each thread of the of, of the block uh, probably increase, and if the register increase on GPU on GPUs, that means the, there could be the occupancy could be decreased. That means there are fewer blocks that can be uh, executed uh, concurrently, potentially. So uh, I, I we benchmarked a uh, bilateral filter here. Uh, we uh, logged the register usage and we computed theoretical occupancy for four different uh, patterns, and we see that the uh, the the compared to this uh, naive approach, basically you check all the border all the borders. The applying the ISP uh, did uh, result in some register usage. However, the occupancy is not always reduced. Only three of the four uh, uh, four modes uh, have, have a redu uh, reduction in occupancy. So. What we see here is, is essentially, uh, we see a trade-off here, right? So um, by doing this uh, iteration-based partitioning, we try to specialize and try to reduce the execution of these conditional checks. That means we have fewer instructions being executed per block. But on the other side, if we do this, we see this increase uh, register usage, reducing occupancy, that means fewer blocks uh, could be executed concurrently. So that means should we uh, we need to ask ourselves is it beneficial or not and what does it depend on it depends on a lot of things image mask size also which architectures etc and in our paper we try to model this and uh, create a, an electric model to do some kind of uh, benefit and cost estimation estimation uh, i don't want to go in, into details of the uh, mathematics here but i just want to quickly show you what we consider uh, in this model um, so first, we want to kind of estimate the number of instructions executed in a, a naive implementation. This is quite quite straightforward. If you think about it, you have an image of size x x by s y, and your window size is n by n. That means in each uh, pixel in your output image, you need to uh, read a window of pixels, and for each pixel, you need to check all the four borders, and you also need to execute your own kernel. So n check means the number of instructions to check one border, and n kernel assume it to be number of instructions to execute one kernel. So in this case, we can somehow uh, give an estimation of the naive implementation. And uh, the, what what about the ISP uh, after applying the ISP? We, as I said, the uh, total number of instructions is the summation of each specialized region. And each specialized region depends on, of course, where it is. If it's in top left, top right, or body, and then the number of uh, checks for the border is different. And therefore, by doing this, we can also somehow estimate the number of instructions ex executed by ASP. And we also want to combine, take into consideration of the occupancy loss here. Basically, this, that's what this all means. And together, we can have some kind of uh, estimation if the ISP is beneficial or not. Otherwise, we should fall back to the naive implementation. For the detail of this, of course, I welcome discussions afterwards or check our paper. But for time being, I will not go into more details here. So before I finish, I would like to show you one approach, one domain specific language and compiler. Why do we want to do this? Because uh, manually applying this uh, uh, transformation is very tedious work and not, not really portable. And I want to uh, show you an automated approach using such uh, 
uh, uh, compiler-based approach. So uh, the tool we want to show you is called HiPack. It's short for Heterogeneous Image Processing Acceleration. It's uh, internal DSL embedded in C++, and all the analysis and code generation is based on Clang. And this is a source-to-source -source compiler. That means we generate CUDA code, and it is also open sourced. So here I show you one example of uh, what, what is the look and feel of using HiPack. And this is the DSL in HiPack to compute a, a bilateral filter. And uh, so this part is just a piece of uh, kernel code that you specify uh, your kernel and you iterate over domain some computations. This, of course, the detail doesn't matter here. This is a bilateral filter. You can also compute a Gaussian filter or whatever you want. And here we have some parameters. So we have the mask, the domain, and the input image, output image, and in the end, the filter. So here, this is a language construct that we provide in HiPack. It's called boundary condition. Here, you can specify different boundaries that you want, and the compiler should take care of the ISP that I just described earlier. Also, using such kind of approach is, is, is interesting and is useful, we believe, because for example, it's uh, you don't have to specify the target architecture or user defined block size every time, right? This is taken care of somewhere else. And because you don't have to specify this every time you, you make a change in your uh, DSL code. In the DSL code, what you just what you just do is you focus on your computation. You focus on what to compute, not how to compute, not the optimization, but only the algorithm. And all these optimizations are taken care of somewhere else and transparent to the user. So in the end, uh, this is the, the code that's being, the kernel code that's being generated from this piece of DSL. And as you can see, it's much more efficient and productive to write this rather than this. Okay, so that's about the uh, theoretical part, and I want to show you some results. Um, here I show you part of the results uh, from our paper. Uh, that's This is a bilateral filter uh, tested on GTX 680 and for patterns, for image sizes, and, we can, and the uh, vertical axis is the, uh, the normalized speed up and uh, uh, with respect to this naive implementation, basically we check everything. And uh, for these four patterns or different image size, we can have a few observations. So first is, so when the image size increases, as we can see, the, uh, the benefit of ISP starts to increase as well. And this is, why, why is this is, why it's like this? Because uh, when the image is larger, the body of the image is also uh, larger. The percentage of the pixels in the body is also larger. That means uh, the ISP will reduce more instructions uh, executed. And that means it's uh, the more image we have and the more benefit we should have by applying ISP in general. And uh, that means on the other side for small images, uh, Actually, not applying ISP is the better option. We should fall back to the original, the naive implementation, because the uh, the uh, the body is not that uh, is is not a dominant part of the image, and also because of this region switching statement, and it reduces the occupancy, and therefore the uh, cost outweighs the benefit. But of course, there's one uh, one, except, uh, one exception here. You see for this repeat pattern and the ISP is still better. Why is this the case? Because for this pattern, it's because this uh, uh, checking the borders is more expensive than the others. A repeat means you have to really go to the other side of the border and you have a while loop there instead of just one if statement. So the, if the conditional check statement is really, really expensive, then your ISP approach should always get you a better result. Um, there, there are also some, uh, we also want to say like, uh, it is possible to estimate the, this, uh, the, the, the benefit and cost of this by using the an analytic model that we, uh, we proposed in the paper. And 
I, I, I will not show the details here. These are only part of the result, but if you are interested, uh, please check our paper. But by uh, we are able to analyze in a way that for these smaller images, we fall back to the, uh, to the naive implementation to get actually not uh, slow down. Okay, uh, that's uh, uh, and that's about it. Let me summarize. So, what did I say? Uh, filtering is a very important operation in image processing, and computing such operators that means there could be out of bound memory access. And to solve this problem, a naive approach is to insert all these conditional statements. But this is expensive, so it is possible to specialize the image, specialize the iteration space into different regions. But because of doing this on GPUs, we have to have this kind of region switching statement to guide each thread block into which region that it must execute. But doing so uh, has some trade-offs. That means we could probably increase register usage and reduce the occupancy. And there's a trade-off we can explore and we can estimate. And in the end, all this uh, can be uh, incorporated into a, a domain specific language and a compiler approach to automate uh, the whole process. Okay, that was it. And thank you for listening. Now I'm uh, available for questions. Wonderful. <clears throat> so I have indeed one question and that relates um, to the importance of, of this work in general. So um, the problem is quite related to stencil computation. So, and there are many DSLs and other alternatives. I mean, you showed nicely, you know, doing the naive approach versus um, your optimization. But I think in, in, in the long run, right, for your PhD, you should clearly investigate, you know, those other frameworks and approaches. And um, so what do you think? Did you already investigate those? some of them or what what are your thoughts we benchmarked uh yes you, you're right there are a lot of uh, uh dsls and also compilers that that uh, look at the same problem um within image processing but of course stencil is more than image processing but within image processing we we look at like uh uh, highlight or, or lift this kind of uh, domain specific language, and we also uh, performed some uh, uh, some some benchmark. But how do they do it? Um, I'm I'm not an expert here, but as far as I know, um, they do not. Uh, I don't I don't think they in high, in lift or highlight there are this kind of specialized uh, implementation. So it's more or less the, you have to define the the uh, you have you uh, you have to define the output and input and the mask size etc and then the domain is inferred backwards from the output to the input and I, i'm not sure how uh, the detail of the implementation in those dsls but they are indeed also have this kind of uh, uh, problems i think that's good nice work and very interesting um okay do we get any other question from the audience because we are actually ahead of our schedule uh, but that's great so um um hi paul uh this is Jamie. i i have some question for you um i think <laughs> i think uh, one thing is interesting that as, as julia said if you compare your framework with like highlight um and you found and, and the performance of your 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 generator code code is better is higher then it's definitely very interesting for 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 people and um, and also I was wondering uh, because I know that your your framework is not only targeting uh, GP but also PGAs and other accelerators and, and do you think that uh, for your uh, filter um, the PGA can achieve a higher performance uh, than the GPU. Um. <laughs> that's that's a very good question. I'm I'm um, the, the guy who works on FPGA sitting next to me, but I don't know exactly um, what is the performance. 
uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure which is faster, actually. We mm -hmm. never compare a, a GPU result with, with a FPGA result, but that's a mm -hmm. good question. I should I should think about that, but thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's um, um, for FPGA or GPU. Yeah, because I assume that your kernel, the filter kernel is a, a compute bound, right? Not a memory bound. Is it a compute bound or memory bound kernel? Yeah, because if it is a memory bound, then probably we need some large FPGAs that 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 have a lot, that have high memory bandwidth. But if it is compute bound, then I think it's likely that an FPGA can achieve higher performance uh, with this, uh, a lot of DSPs units on, on the on an FPGA. Yes, so could be, but again, I'm not an expert mm -hmm. in FPGA, so I'm really not qualified to comment on that. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, uh, for GPUs, stencils, I would say mostly uh, memory bound. I see. Um, most of the case, but yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember, I recall that there are some uh, paper, FPGA papers published uh, maybe at FPGA that show that uh, a PGA can achieve higher performance than a GPU for stencil. Um, um, I didn't look at those papers closely, but I, I just feel that there are some opportun opportunities for some specific kernels uh, that a PGA can probably achieve higher performance. OK, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, interesting. All right, yeah. Um, so I think. Um, in that sense, let's proceed. Thank you very much. Well, I think I uh, wish you good luck with your thesis. Thank you. Good work. Um, good. Um,